Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. We have got a few new things going on today. We have got a new mic, one mic, and one very expensive uh, little system. So hopefully, as of now, we should start having far better audio. And um, if we've set it up correctly. So we are, um, we are still, still playing around, but all being well, this should be the moment we move forward it and we can um yeah some of you should notice the difference right then what we're going to do today is we are going to do another egg sac pulling and this is from our avic avic you regulars will know that we have a few of these and um this girl is is ready to give us up now she we noticed the sack back here on the 19th of the third and it is now the 24th of the 4th. So it's been in there 37 days. Now we've left this one in a little longer than normal. We sometimes pull them at 30 days, sometimes at 35. And we found that they've been a little bit, they could have gone a little bit longer. So we've allowed this one to go 37. Now that's 30 days from when we noticed the egg sac. That's not to say that she actually laid it that day we noticed that she had sealed herself in a couple of days previous, but we always take our day, our date, from the very first day that we observe the egg sac, which means it can be a little bit more on in development than, than, we, than we, uh, we hope for. But what we do know is it won't be any less than what we hope for, which is always a good thing. So what we're gonna do, we are gonna, She's in this enclosure here, and you can see it gets rather messy. The moss has died off. Everything's sort of like died back a fair bit. And this is because once we get that egg sac, we don't tend to touch them at all. Important that we leave them alone. So we can take off our, our backing card off the back of the enclosure, and you will see that she is in there holding on to her egg sac. So we can... We're going to have to take the top of the enclosure off. So we can put that there as well. We're going to get our tweezers. Because the last thing you want to do is put your fingers down in here. So we're going to just pull back the web here for this branch. And that's so that we can remove the branch altogether. We can keep it out of our way. Now, one of the other things that's worth mentioning, we quite often get asked this in the comments, is when we've got our spider in with an egg sac, we don't worry about filling up the water bowl. And we do not feed under any circumstances do we put food inside the enclosure once you've got an egg sac. And it's um, because she's not interested in feeding, all she wants to do is look after this egg sac. She's not going to come out for a drink either. She's going to stay webbed in that, inside that cocoon, all of this. She's safe and sound inside there, and that's where she's going to stay. So what we're going to do, we are going to open a hole in the top. We're just going to peel back some of this webbing to uh, allow us access. And then we can pull back our bark a little bit until we can see what's going on. Oh, that's a lovely big egg sac. I'm just going to pull that back like that. All right, now we're going to see if we can take it out. Oh, she's hanging on. Okay, girl, you can let go now. Thank you very much. There we go. That's a lovely, lovely egg sac. Now when she's out on the top like this, we just want to be careful how we put, put our wood back. Because we don't want to mistake anything for our fingers. We can put our piece of wood back in. There we go. She's going to go back down inside the, inside the burrow. We'll put this back on top. Now we'll just give her a few minutes to settle herself down. We'll leave her there. Right. 
we've got our pot ready in anticipation. We are rather hoping that um, it's a viable sack. It certainly looks good and clean, nice and healthy. And it's got a little bit of weight to it as well. So we're going to... You'll notice it is quite baggy. Yeah, you see there, it's, it's actually quite loose. You can see there. Which means that we can get hold of this without fear of damaging any of the little spiderlings that are inside. Now we often get asked, you know, don't you, because your fingers are big, that you might well damage them. But there's a, there's a big air gap inside there, you can see that. So what we do is we just get hold of it like that, and then we can pull it back, and we can open it up. There we go. And we can open it up sort of layer by layer. We're getting in there now. We've not seen anything yet. Nearly there. Oh, it's looking good. It's looking good. Here we go, we have movement. We're down to the final, final few layers now. There we go. We can get hold of it. And here we are. We have some very, very well developed eggs with legs this one here has just popped out and there you go if you can see those that is a wonderful result try and tilt them up without losing them now that's interesting actually to see that they have gone 37 days and these are these are this is a wonderful wonderful clutch here they all look very very good so what we're going to do we're going to we have our nursery pot here ready we've got some water that's in the bottom which is already at our room temperature here and we're going to tip them out And see what we got. As you remember, that when they come out of here, they literally just fall out straight into the thing, and we can see that there's um, there's some molts in there already. I'll just tease them out. This is a lovely clutch. we go look at the size of that one that is huge as many of these are very very big in actual fact it's quite interesting to see the size differences between them within the same sack which just goes to show that maybe this points a little bit to some of the natural selection that we see in the spiders in the wild not all of them would survive you know some of them would be lost and uh, there we go that's all of them there so maybe that does point to something that you know suggests that maybe some are a little weaker to start with than others very interesting. 
Right, so I don't know. Hmm, try and tip these over. I don't know if you can really see these without me getting them wet. Yeah, you can see in there. So that's an absolutely wonderful result. And uh, what we will do, we will use our our camera and we'll take a photograph and then we can get some numbers as to how many we've got. It doesn't look like a huge sack. It's not a particularly big one, but everything that's in there is really, really healthy. So they're looking really nice. And we can see our female here, she's come out and about. So what we will do now is we will give her a nice drink. We'll um, spray the enclosure up just to get the humidity up a little bit in there. And, um, and we'll give her a nice feed as well. And then give her a little bit of peace and quiet. And the main thing to do now is to actually bring her back up in condition because her abdomen is looking a little bit on the small side. You know, in mind, she's been tucked away in here for nearly a month without doing anything on top of the hard work of actually producing them youngsters, making that sack and looking after it for the last month. So uh, it all takes its toll on your spider. So it's very, very important that once we take our egg sacks, we get them away from our female, that we can actually now concentrate on improving her general health, which means getting some really nice food into her and getting her rehydrated. And it won't take long, literally a week or two, and you will see a transformed spider. She will look totally different. So that's the aim to do that now. And then uh, these guys have got another molt or so before they're actually ready to, um, to go back out into the, the big wide world. But what a wonderful result. Another cracking success for the Beastie Room. Very happy. Right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, don't forget, be calm. Be gentle and love your spider. And I'll see you soon, guys.